Double Sports Talk Worldwide with some news for the world of boxing. So y'all know what time it is. You ain't in a rush to get concussed. Now, seems like we're going to be in Britain on this one a little bit. You know what I mean? This is going to happen a little bit here. You know, we're going to be talking about a little bit about Dillian White. You know, and um, shoot, little Tony Bellevue. Shoot. But uh, at the end of the day, first, Wilmington, Serena Williams did not get the 24th Grand Slam. Lost to Simone Halep in straight set 6-2, 6-2. I know you probably don't care, but just be because Serena was trying to get 24. So no, we're 24, right? But we in England, so we might as well go on and stay over there. Now, Tony Bellew was giving an interview, and Tony Bellew was saying, hey, look, you know, if Dillian White, heavyweight contender Dillian White, uh, that he doesn't get a, a, a title shot, it would be a disgrace. And it's a disgrace right now. Right? And so you, you listen to that and you probably don't really know what's going on with Dillian White. You hear, hey, he's been not been a, a challenger mandatory for six hundred days, you know, the narrative that's going around, then you know, you just leave it at that. Man, what's wrong with them? Man, they ain't giving Dilly White, White a shot. But from people that know, that's ridiculous. Right? It's ridiculous at this point. And I'm just hoping the British fans are learning from, you know, from other things, just like the Anthony Joshua and the Joshua effect, right? You know, hold the fighters accountable first, right? Don't anoint them too soon. Make them earn the position because when you get in that entitlement position, you're going to have problems in the future, right? Dillian White has had every opportunity, especially from the WBC, every opportunity and will be documented to get the fight, right? And let's be real about anything in boxing, heavyweight boxing right now. Fight Ortiz, and all your problems are gone. That's what you got to do. All it is. That's, it's, no, it's easy, really. Fight Ortiz. If it's Dillian White, Dillian White, you had the opportunity from the WBC mandated. And what does mandated mean? You got to. Told him you got to. Mandated him to fight Ortiz. And he said no. You know, we're messing around. What are we doing? Ignoring subpoenas nowadays. Who do you think you are, Trump or something? You know, hey, I told you you got to. And then you don't. He lucky that the WBC even talked to him. It'd be hard to get me back to the next meeting to talk about a dude who ignored my subpoena. I ain't talking to you, man. You know what I'm saying? No, I ain't talking about him. But next, right? He had his opportunity. But no, the champion even told him before that, hey, if you fight Ortiz, you get me. My word is my bond. Didn't do that. Do you know that the guy that was number one in, in uh, Dilly White behind him was behind him, Dominique Brazil? was in front of him, actually, and Dominic Brazil offered him to fight. So we can decide who's number one between us because I'm in front of you. Actually, I don't even have to do this. But offer him that, that wasn't good either. So most of us know these things, but you can't put the narrative out there anymore, you know, like that. You do know the details about it, right? You do know the details about it. And like I said again, you know, if he didn't fight Ortiz, that was the opportunity. Ortiz makes anybody in any scenario in the heavyweight division look like you the man. If you beat Ortiz, you the man. In any scenario, Dillian White, we've seen enough. Dillian White ought to beat Ortiz last year or this year or his next fight or whatever. There will be a demand for him to fight whoever's the champion. If they get a uh, undisputed champion, for example. You beat Ortiz. Tyson Fury, right now, if he tells Deontay Wilder, hey, Deontay, man, get out the way. You don't know how to beat the, the old bum. Let me, I'll take care of the bum. What'd it take you? Nine rounds? i take care of the bum. You sit down. You you know, you chill. Right? You heal yourself. You know? And that's, of course, Andy Ruiz says to do an undisputed fight. Then do, Monty wants to chill. You fight Ortiz, Tyson Fury. See if he could do better. Tyson Fury should be saying that anyway. So should Dillian White. I ain't letting Deontay Wilder fight no Ortiz two times before nobody fights. Uh, we fight this old dude. That's where it's becoming. But it doesn't. You know what I mean? It just doesn't. So it's something like that, man. Anybody beat Ortiz right now. If Kubat Pulev would have beat Ortiz this year, wouldn't we be saying, hey, man, shoot, you got to beat the one. Somebody better fight Kubat Pulev. Then we'll be counting the days he's been the IBF mandatory. Because he can count some days, too, over there. Right? There's things going on. You know, anybody. Joshua would have beat him at the beginning. If he would have went and got the WBA tab championship from Ortiz instead of uh, just letting it be put in his uh, fight against Vladimir Klitschko, for example. But I'm getting too, you know, deep into it. The point is, 
any scenario. Look at Joseph Parker, for example. Joseph Parker, my boy, rolling with Joe. But look at the scenario. Joseph Parker, boom, needs to fight. Says, Deontay Wilder, get up out the way, man. I'm going to fight Ortiz right now. Right? Boom. Joseph Parker outboxes Ortiz or gets rid of Ortiz. Right? Do you know about the Joseph Parker, Andy Ruiz Jr. rematch would be at that point? Right? It would be ridiculous. Probably one of the biggest fights. Right? If he were to beat Ortiz. I didn't say he'd go win the title. Beat Ortiz. That's it. And then the rematch with Andy Royce Jr. Any scenario. Hey, look, what about Philip Herkovich, who's up and coming? Or uh, your boy Joyce, or whatever, if he wins, provided. Go beat Ortiz. Then they just jump right into the, hey, man, he, he's ready. You know what I'm saying? So that guy right there is deciding. So we can't just let Dillian White come through and say, I'm going to fight Chizura instead of that, who had nine losses, and then go tooth and nail with Chizura. All right, and act like somebody's scared of you or Wilder's worried about you. Why would he be? You don't have a title and you've been vulnerable in multiple fights. Right? Tooth and nail with him, tooth and nail with Robert Hellenius. Right? Joseph Parker had you wobbling at the end of the fight. And and by the way, Dylan White says he's not re readdressing Joseph Parker. That's how he feels. I ain't readdressing Joseph Parker. That's a man I beat. There's no like, hey, I was filing a man. Mm -mm. Was, I was almost out around 12. Uh uh. I ain't, I'm not readdressing him. So this is the guy here just asking people to fight him for stuff, but he ain't going to readdress the close fight either. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right? And not do what the what they tell him to do, but hey, I'm still supposed to get that. Well, that sounds like entitlement to me because, you know, where are the credentials? Right? There's not any. So that therefore, you know, he's just got to wait his time because my, my, uh, Deontay Wilder, has got mad, uh, he's just did away with the mandatory in Dominic Brazil. So he could do a voluntary, but it's not even going to be considered a voluntary if he's fighting for uh, significant fights, right? Who the hell fights Ortiz in a voluntary, by the way? Who does that? <laughs> who, who does that? I'm voluntary after the first time I didn't have to fight him. I went to a, another sanctioned body to get him. I know I'm repeating myself, but we, we can't get nobody else to fight Ortiz. And look what he's doing. He's going to fight him a second time. So let's just hope that everybody involved in the fans... Do not let somebody brainwash them into thinking that Dillian White has some kind of, uh, you know, right to get a rematch again, somebody again, right? And also, you didn't even get, you were in negotiation with Andy Joshua, and that didn't work out. I don't know what if somebody's supposed to just bring it to the front porch. He's had a lot of opportunities, and the other fighters that are out there that are in that area, or, or pretty much as good as him, are not even getting up. Uh, chance. You get a lot of them. So the next one to come his way, he boy better take it. You know what I'm saying? So let's see what's happening going forward. I thought that was kind of pertinent. I think uh, I disagree with Tony Bellew on this, that it would be a disgrace. You know, I roll with Tony Bellew. He's coming straight, you know, be straight, but he, he supports his, uh, his British uh, boxers and he does a good job of it. But this one, I think he's out there. I think he does know what's, what else is going on. Why wouldn't he? He would know about negotiations. He wouldn't he's that match room himself. He would know some things. But, you know, sometimes that might be that little promoter hat going on, too. You know, so let's see how that is. But I just think that uh, I disagree totally with Tony Bay with this one. I think Dillian White does not deserve a shot. And know what? Nothing should stop. If Undisputed is first. And if Deontay Wilder and Andy Ruiz Jr. or Anthony Joshua after Andy Ruiz Jr., Wants to get undisputed, that has priority. Everybody else, get in line and fight each other so we can crystallize one, two, or maybe three guys that need to be fought after we get undisputed. That's a scenario that most of us are looking for. So let's see what happens. Don't sports talk. Worldwide. And I'm about to y'all.